And good morning, YouTube. The good folks at Drock sent me this DC to DC buck converter to review and test. I'll put a link to Drock's website and to the converter information in the video description. Following up from the introduction video, this time I'll look at how the converter works with a real load. This first test will be to power a common 12 volt LED strip light. These lights typically have three series LEDs and a current limiting resistor in a segment here. And there are multiple segments arranged in parallel. So they're designed to work off 12 volt DC power and this resistor is sized to limit the current with that applied voltage and there are 150 ohms in this strip. I checked the 12 volt DC power supply I purchased to use with my first strip lights. It outputs right about 12 volts. For this test I'll use my bench supply to feed power into a 5 meter LED strip light and I have a DC watt meter at the power input to the strip. Then I'll test the voltage, current and power into the LEDs at various voltages. There are a hundred parallel segments in this five meter strip. So at the rated voltage, which I'm at 12 volts, that's about 1.4 amps of current. So that works out to 14 milliamps per segment. And with a 2.1 volt drop across the resistor, that leaves about 3.3 volts per LED. So I'm not sure of the exact 5050 SMD emitters that are used on this particular strip, but 20 milliamps is a typical maximum continuous rating. So if we go up here to about 2 amps here, that's 20 milliamps per segment. There's a 3 volt drop across a 150 ohm resistor and it takes about 13 and a quarter volts to hit the 20 milliamp current so that leaves about 10 and a quarter volts divided across the three emitters or 3.42 volts per LED and you can notice that the current keeps rising as I uh, increase the voltage here so if I go up to say uh, 14 so that might be a charging voltage on a battery and we're up to about two and a half amps at 14 and a half volts. If we go up a little higher there. So running one of these lights off a 12 volt solar battery bank is problematic as the voltage while charging can be over 14 volts. So using a DC buck converter to limit the voltage to 12 volts has two benefits. First, it prevents over voltage and thus over current in the LEDs. And secondly, it acts like a transformer. And at the higher voltages, it should use less current to supply the strip at a more of a constant power. So we'll look at these two effects and see how well it performs. Okay, now I've got the converter in there and I've set the output to about 12 volts. And as you can see, as I step down the power, here's the input voltage. As I step down from, say, 14 to 13, the output remains right about 12. There's 12.8. We're still 1196 on the output. And I can come down to 12 volts and now the output starts to fall a little bit and so let's go down a little bit lower so here we're at 1175 and here we're at 1158 so it's around 200 250 millivolts drop across the converter but it's still outputting uh, one and a quarter amps as a comparison, I'll use one of these pulse width modulated or PWM dimmers to limit the output voltage to the light strip. So we've got it about 12 volts. So again, starting at, at about 14.4 volts on the input as I drop down to say 13 volts. So I've got 13. Now the output's 11.4. And if I drop down to 12, the output's 10.8. As the battery voltage drops, the light output of the LEDs dims. I don't know if that shows up in the camera. When you use the dimmer at a constant setting, that LED brightness falls off as the battery voltage falls off. 
And then another thing I notice with this dimmer is it's affected by the load. With loads under about one amp, it's hard to get full brightness on the dimmer. You can turn it all the way up. Now you can watch here, I've got about two amps of load, and I can go up to pretty close to full brightness. You can see there is some loss here. I've got 1194 going in and 1174. So again, about a 200 millivolt drop, similar to the buck converter. Now the buck converter, on the other hand, outputs the set voltage no matter what the load. So that's an advantage there. And also, I don't know if you can hear it, but at certain settings, I don't know if that shows up on the camera, but at certain settings, and if you have loose wiring connections, there's an audible buzz heard from this dimmer because it works at about 1200 hertz. Now the buck converter operates at about 180 kilohertz, so it's well beyond the audible range. Okay, so what's the best way to drive these LED strip lights off a 12 volt battery bank? The answer depends on your specific situation and needs. So if you mainly use the LEDs at night, when, for instance, solar panels are not charging the battery bank, then a direct connection like this would be fine. If instead you want to have some control over the brightness of the LEDs, the PWM dimmer works well. It's, that's especially true if you need to adjust that brightness frequently because the knob is really easy to use. Also, a PWM dimmer costs about six dollars and it can handle up to four of those five meter strips which is about eight amps total. The buck converter is a good choice for LEDs that are used all times of the day or night. It's a little more expensive at I think 1099 US. It's more of a set it and forget it, you know, set your voltage and then install it and let it run at the desired output voltage and brightness and it'll basically maintain that at least until the battery voltage drops below that output set point and then the LEDs will start to dim a little bit. So stay tuned for the next video when I'll use this buck converter to power an old LCD monitor that takes 12 volt DC input. If you have any questions, post those up in the comments section below and give the video a thumbs up if you found it useful. Subscribe to my channel be, to be notified when the next video is posted. And as always, thanks for watching.